Good morning. Where do I stand? Wherever you want to. Where do I put my hands? Just kidding. I don't know if you guys have seen that movie. Man, God is good, isn't he? Yes. Come on. Yes. God is good, right? Yes. This morning, I just want every person in here that has made a commitment to sow into this ministry, I want them to stand up because I want to honor them today. Around the room, I know there's a lot of you in here that sow into this ministry of Team Extreme around the world. Um, we've probably seen 20,000 people come to Christ this year. That is amazing. You guys have sowed into that. You guys are just as important. Let's give these guys a round of applause for bringing people into the kingdom of God. Amen. Man, I'm excited. Well, just a short trip here in Washington. Like Gary said, my life used to be crazy. I'm sure most of you know what my life used to be. I was an alcoholic drug addict that spent most of my time serving myself. Anybody know anybody like that? Yeah. Probably do. I mean, in this area especially. But God is so good. He has completely redeemed my life. Captain America's here, guys. There he is. Captain America. God has completely redeemed my life. I was recently married. Amen. For the third time. Not so many amens on that one. <laughs> but God is so good. I decided I'm going to let God pick my wife for me. And he has picked me an amazing woman of God. I brag on her all over the world. I met her in Israel last year on my first overseas missions trip. She asked me, why do you always brag on that I'm Jewish? And I'm, I'm like, I don't know. I'm just so pumped up that my wife is part Jewish. She's part Irish and part Jewish. She comes from the O'Connor clan. And the Gilroys probably stole stuff from them back in the day. Because <laughs> when I was in Ireland, I found out the Gilroys were a bunch of thieves over there. <laughs> Stealing stuff. <laughs> but God's the Redeemer, right, Grandfather? <laughs> oh. That's just what they said. I don't know. But yeah, I have a baby boy on the way. Um, Jonathan Joseph Lazarus Lemon is going to be his name. It's a long name. He's got a huge anointing on his life, he's already anointed in the womb. What do you guys want to hear about? I'm, I'm a representative of you guys and Jesus Christ around the world. Do um, you guys want to hear some stories? you want to hear, see some pictures? Or you just want... Well, what I've been doing is traveling the world. In the last year, started in Israel, went to Scotland, Ireland, Norway, a little bit of Sweden. Um, came back for a few days, came out here, went to the Philippines for a month went to Bolivia, and went back to Israel. And after this, in, on Thursday, Friday, I go to Duluth, Minnesota for three weeks, because we do do stuff in the States, and we see lots of healings and lots of salvations in our own country. And, and then after that, I'll be home for three days, and I'm going to Korea for a month, and or Egypt. I'd rather go to Egypt myself, because they pay all the airfare on that trip, and... <laughs> It's Egypt. There's a reason for everything. You know, Gary asked me to speak just a couple days ago. I was just going to share a little bit here and then, you know, have all you guys go into the, the benefit dinner. And, you know, I'm not really a preacher. You know, Gary's a preacher. Rusty's a preacher. God called me to be an evangelist. And he called me to be an evangelist when I was 13. And he used Carmen West to give me that message that I was going to be an evangelist. And I spent the rest, oh, probably 20 years running away from that, that calling to be an evangelist. Anybody know anybody like that? That's, there might be people in here, even though you're coming to church, but you're still running from what God's called you to do. And that may be praying for people for healing. That may be having the, the gift of tongues, the gift of prophecy. But like myself, I was afraid. I didn't want to step out in those gifts. And I just, I just wanted to, you know, just come to church and sing some songs and go back home, drink some coffee. But 
One thing we are called to do, and this is uh, one of our, our main verses at Team Extreme, is Matthew 10, 7, and 8. And I know that I didn't read the whole book of Matthew, and I'm just picking a few scriptures here. I'm not doing the whole background, but Candace, she can do that for you. You guys should go over Matthew next Sunday in a very deep way. Um, and as you go, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Amen. You know, I love sharing God's testimony that he used me in. I used to call it my testimony, but I was getting ready to share it at International House of Prayer in Kansas City. I had been healed. I had another healing in my body. My shoulder was hurting, and when I got in my car wreck, I had broke the sciatic nerve canal that your nerve passes through. I cracked that, and this hip was all messed up, and they, they asked for two specific prayers, somebody's shoulder and somebody's sciatic nerve. So I'm, And there's like 3,000 people in this room, so I'm like, so people, get, people gather around me that were sitting by me, lay hands on me, and I was healed. So I went to share my testimony, and, be, and at IHOP, it's live stream around the world. There's probably a million people watching live. So I'm a little nervous. I'm getting ready to go up on a Sunday morning and share what happened Friday night about me getting healed. And that's when God said, this is my testimony, dude. I just chose to use you in it. And I'm like, okay, well, I wasn't nervous anymore, and uh, it's been good. You know, talking about healing the sick and raising the dead. I haven't raised anybody from the dead physically, but I know I've seen a lot of people that have been spiritually dead, raised, and they're doing amazing things in the kingdom. You guys saw the video. You saw me share about the girl that got the heart transplant. That's just one testimony of healing that I am so honored that I get to be a part of and see. Um, we were just in Bolivia in May, and we're at a church kind of like this, and my boss was the speaker, and I was just tagging along with him, and he preached a little bit on the Great Commission, and then he opened it up to healing, and so it was him and I. Here I am at this church in Bolivia. He's on that side. I'm on this side. People are coming up to get prayed for. They're, I mean, this church was on fire. Um, people are falling out all over the place. You know, you're touching them, and they're just falling back, and you walk them all the way to the back of the room till they finally fall down. This little boy, he's probably seven years old. He comes up. His mom's carrying him because he's got like a, I don't know what you call it. It looked like a claw foot. It was a deformed foot, like a club foot almost. And she's crying. She's like, can you pray for my son? His foot, you can't walk. And then she tells the interpreter that, and the interpreter tells me. And I'm like, okay, Lord, this is you. you got to do this. I pray for this kid, and God healed this kid. He's running up and down the aisles. And this is stuff I get to see with my own eyes. This is, I've seen a lot of other stuff with my own eyes, but this is what God has called me to see now and be a part of. What an honor, right? Amen. Um, and that stuff happens here in the States. It happens here in Quinault. I just heard of a healing. My, one of Mike and Holly's daughters got healed. I mean, come on. That is a miracle. That's amazing right there. There's people in this congregation that God has given the gift of healing. And I was just reading. I was kind of praying in the spirit. I had called my wife, pray for me. I don't even know what I'm going to talk about. And... You know, we do communion this morning, and, and Dave's talking about being healed. And, you know, I just want to encourage the church. That's why I had everybody else stand up. Because, you know, yes, I get to go out, and, and I get to go to the other countries, and I get to do these things. But that doesn't make the missionary any more important than the people that are sowing into that ministry. And, you know, we are one body. I just want to read out of um, Corinthians here, 1 Corinthians. And my marker, I just found out this morning. I forgot my, my debit card with the actual PIN number in here. That's my marker. 
For as the body is one and has, as, and has many members, but all the members of that body being many are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit we all have, we were all baptized into the body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into the spirit. For in fact the body is not one member, but many. If the foot should say, because I am not the hand, I am not the body, is it therefore not, not of the body? And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, that'd be weird. <laughs> where, would we, where would we be hearing? If the whole... Um, if the whole were hearing, where would we be smelling? But now God has set the members, each of them, in the body as he pleases. And if we were all one member, where would the body be? But now indeed there are many members, yet one body. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need for you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need for you. No much... No, much rather those members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, on those we bestow greater honor. And our unpresentable parts have greater modesty, but our presentable parts have no need. But God composed the body, having given greater honor to the part which lacks it that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care for one another. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, then all the members are honored with it. Now you are the body of Christ and members individually. And then it goes on and talks about the, the order of the appointed. But we are one body. And I just want to encourage the church in that, that, like I said, you guys are the reason I get to go and share around the world and see these amazing signs and wonders. Um, I said I wasn't going to say um, but I did. First Corinthians uh, 12, I believe it was. That's good stuff right there in the Word of God, truth. So I, I did bring some pictures, and Rusty's got a little slideshow over here. I just want to share with you guys. This here, was a, we went into a prison in the Philippines, and these men were so broken. In the Philippines, they have a lot of lady boys. And in their culture, they call he and she the same thing. From a young age, even in the grade schools, there's kids dressing up like boys, dressing up like girls. And, you know, this is, I don't know why it is so much like that in their culture but there's a lot of there's a lot of this brokenness in this in this country this was our altar call just part of it and there were so many just prisoners in there weeping and i think just about all of them gave their heart to the lord in one of the prisons i saw a guy get healed that was deaf he came up to me he was pointing out his mouth and pointing out his ears and the interpreter said that he was deaf i prayed for him he started jumping around like crazy. God healed him. <laughs> you know, and, and I've heard, I tell that story, and people are like, oh, yeah, I know a lot of people that are healed deaf. Tell them they won the lottery, and yeah, they can hear now. But I believe it, and I know that they were healed. This is me just breaking some really weak bricks in the Philippines. <laughs> Serious. The bricks were made out of almost sand there. This was, the, I think, the same show. Over three days, about 100,000 people came out to hear the gospel. And in, the, in that place, the second night, that's my beautiful wife, praise the Lord. But the second night at that show, we have three teams. Team Extreme, GX International, which is the hip-hop dancers, break dancers, BMX riders. And then we have the island team, which um, they do Hawaiian dance, Samoan. Tahitian, um, New Zealand, all these native dances. On the second night, the lights went out in the middle of the, the show. 
So here's like 50,000 people, because it's the second show. They all heard, and then there's more this night. The lights go out halfway through the show, and we're just sitting there. And uh, so we went out into the crowd, and we just started singing worship songs. And then it was me and this other guy. I'm so blessed. I'm so God made me so bold, and I get to use it for Jesus now. And, you know, we led a couple kids to the Lord. And then God told me to have them start leading kids to the Lord. So here's this group of kids. I'm not the one leading them, but these kids are leading in their own language, in their own dialect. They're leading their friends to the Lord. It was amazing. Yeah. This is my first dance with my, my wife. She took me swing dancing. Any swing dancers in here? I didn't think so. I was not the greatest swing dancer either, but God blessed me with an amazing wife. This is another show in the Philippines. As, I guess as the pictures got transferred, the order kind of got messed up, but that's okay. This is me proposing to my wife. I know this isn't missions, but this is a huge part of my life. I got the ring in Israel. This is, we put my wife to work at the Team Extreme house. We were donated a house. Somebody bought a house for Team Extreme, a ministry house, so we could, we could hold Jewish festivals. We could um, have worship nights there and do all sorts of stuff. And people came and they remodeled it for free. Amazing. This is my Theron Olsen beard. Yes. <laughs> yes. I just want to stay here for a while. Dude, that is a sweet beard. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to get picked up in the shake mill if I keep that thing. <laughs> this was actually in South Carolina at Darlington National Speedway. Come on, I get to go to NASCAR events and preach to a bunch of drunk NASCAR fans. <laughs> Serious. We preached after the race. We had a stand set up as they were exiting the, the venue. And we preached the gospel and did, did strength feats. This guy right here is a former Pittsburgh Steeler li defensive lineman. He quit the NFL. He joined the Marine Corps like Pat Tillman. He went to college with Pat Tillman, which was another guy that quit the NFL and went to the army and end up dying. But this guy was riding his bike from Bakersfield to Washington DC bringing awareness to veterans that are committing suicide. His mom was there, his mom is an Assemblies of God reverend, anointed and you know I still stay in touch with this guy. Just one of the many amazing people I get to meet in this journey that I get to be on. This was the smallest airport I've ever been to. I thought I was landing up at Dale Roeder's house. <laughs> that was in Sucre, Bolivia. And it's at, I think, 12,000 feet. It's the, high, it's the highest airport in the world. And we landed there, and people pushed the carts out. They didn't have little buggies. They were the buggies, and they pushed the luggage in. It was funny. This, whoa, you're going too fast, bro. That's all right. This, I think, was a church that we did. This was after the, the next day, after the, all the healings we saw. And here, at this church, we also saw a few blind people that were not completely blind, but they had gone, you know, 80% blind, were healed probably 80% at the time. And we just kept seeing signs and wonders while we were there in Bolivia. This next slide was an illegal picture that I took. I got in trouble for it. That's a pig snout or a cow snout. In these other countries, they have the open markets where they have the whole animal butchered laying out there with flies all over it. This was a drug and rehab facility that we got to share at. And there I am right there. This was our host. His name, <laughs> this guy, um, oh, I forget his name. Funny guy. He does a, ra a radio, a kid's radio show, and he's like, hey, kids, how you doing out there? All right. <laughs> but he loves Jesus, and he spreads the gospel in Bolivia doing that. This was in Israel. That was um, at the, the pastor of that church was one of the original members on Chips. Anybody remember Chips? Yeah. Remember in the first season there were three guys? He was the third guy. Anyway, he's a, he's a Messianic Jewish pastor in 
He was also in Wonder Woman, a movie star dude. But this church was amazing. I think I shared last time I got to see a, a little girl healed. And I actually felt her knee moving. It was the grossest thing I'd ever felt. <laughs> Besides them taking the screws out of my bones. I could feel her, her knee like... <laughs> and she was healed. She had broke her femur and her hip and tore her knee up in a car wreck. So this was an amazing congregation here. That right there is a 90-year-old Chinese dude. He's the oldest member of Team Extreme. He's written a book. He came out of the underground church in China. His brother was martyred. Next time, I'll, I'll, I'll try to bring the book or send the book. Funny guy, man. He almost got us in trouble in the Garden of Gethsemane because he jumped up on this wall and tried climbing over the fence to get into the... <laughs> Anyway, he sleeps sitting up, too. This here is at that same congregation. And uh, I actually didn't break those bricks because I fell on my face and I was weeping before God. And that was way more powerful than me breaking any amount of bricks. This was another little boy that I think Kevin was praying for. Um, I forget. But we get to lay hands and pray with people and it's amazing this is Jaffa or Yapa and we got to stay there this last time just a little ways to the left is where we stayed but now as the the story goes the Bible says is this where Jonah was spit out or where he was he took off from that's where he took off from I didn't get on any boats there <laughs> this was the first encounter or the first place where I met my wife and that's my my son Liam right there Great little man of God. This was last year, and now this year we got to go back as a family, married, and a baby on the way. How amazing is that? Is God the Redeemer or what? I mean, that's the Temple Mount. That's, uh, oh, that's uh, Muslim territory there. That's f actually from the place that we get to stay there. It's a... Catholic, I don't know, co not a commune, but congregation, or what's the, oh, it's like a Catholic church deal. It's the place where they took Jesus after they captured him in the garden. They took him here and beat him up, and that's the wailing wall. On the right side are the women, on the left are the men. The, one of the darkest places I've ever been is in that cave over there. The spiritual heaviness was so thick in there. It was weird. It was the spirit of religion. Because um, there's guys in there just sitting there and they're, they're reading the, the Torah and they're just, I mean, they're reading the Word of God, but it was pretty dark for me over there. That's a Muslim lady sitting outside the, the big uh, dome of the rock, the gold dome thing. Now, this was the first picture. <laughs> That is in, in my DTS, and I just wanted to, I wanted this to be the first, and then you get to see what God has done. This, I'm rocking a mullet here, and uh, my brother-in-law, David, he's had several mullets. When I met him, he had one, and uh, I, try, I was trying to bring it back, and sometimes we just need to let some things lay, I guess. <laughs> and see what God can do. From a mullet to that, we're under the, the huppa. We, had a, we didn't have a traditional Jewish wedding, but we had a lot of the, the Jewish traditions in our wedding. And it was good. It was really good. My daughter was there. It was uh, such a blessing. These are some other guys. Uh, one guy on the right is from Norway. The other guy is from Kansas. He's an IHOP worship leader. And we're up on Mount Carmel right there looking over Jerusalem. And the eastern gate is over there. That's where Jesus is going to come through. Right there. Look at it. These are my kids. That's Zachary on the left. Haley. You all know Haley and Liam. This is in Pittsburgh after the wedding. This is uh, one of the trees in the Garden of Gethsemane. That might, Jesus might have, might have been there. Every place that is the Eastern Gate. Every place in Israel where Jesus was. It's always one of the two places he could have been. 
they say, because everybody's trying to cash in. That is Golgotha, and that's one of the two places they think Jesus was crucified and buried, right by Golgotha. That place was amazing, right there, the garden tomb. Going, just being there was so peaceful. Being where Jesus was. That's the guy. He slept like that all the time. That's the funny picture. Um, that is actually on Mount Carmel in the Drew community. It's an unreached people group. They're called the Drews. They believe that oh, Moses' father-in-law, Jethro. Jethro was the dude, and that their Messiah is going to come through a male. So they wear these baggy pants like they're going to spring out the male or the Messiah. So it's, we get to preach the gospel to them because Jesus loves them just the same as he loves us. This is up on Mount Carmel where they say that the false prophets were destroyed. Is this boring, you guys? No. Okay, okay. That is the garden of, Arm I mean, the valley of Armageddon. Looking down and supposedly that's where the final battle is going to take place, right, Pastor? It'd be pretty bloody down there. That's the, this is the spot where they tried throwing Jesus off the cliff. And he walked back through the, the crowd. You remember that story? That's, this is in Nazareth. Nazareth. And um, it was cool being up there. But of course the plaque that they said that he disappeared and he floated off somewhere. But it does say that he walked back through the crowd, right? This is where Jesus performed his first miracle. Turned water into wine in the basement of this church. And there was a midget nun there. <laughs> that I had my picture with, but I don't think that one made it. But it was so crazy down there. It's just so dark. There's no lights. And they, they say they have the same cisterns down there. It was pretty cool. I don't know. This was this last trip in Israel. This is on Mount Carmel. There's a congregation. And most of these people are Russian Jews. And we had about 120 salvations at this particular show right here. In Israel, there was 130 all together this last trip, and that's very hard ground there. Yes. You know, it's like throwing seeds on rocks, literally. But God is good. This man was a Palestinian soldier that was had his back broken, had um, was left to die by the Israeli soldiers. He came back to America, became an Assembly of God pastor, and he's part of Team Extreme, and he goes to Jeru or to Tel Aviv to the youth conference and does this big thing about forgiveness, about forgiving the soldiers that broke his back and calling all the soldiers up and also um, asking them to extend forgiveness. This time, he looked right in the camera. We're on God TV, streaming around the world, and he's pointing at the camera, talking to the U.S. government and the Israeli government. It was pretty intense. Anyway, you had to be there, I guess. This guy, I was just trying to get my picture with him. He wasn't real happy about it. He, they don't like their pictures taken there. This is in the old city of Jerusalem. And, yeah, that's about all I got to say about that one. That's Liam blowing the shofar. That's his, one of his talents. He loves to blow the shofar. We celebrate Shabbat every Friday night, which is the, the original... Um, Sabbath, not saying anything against the Sabbath we do now, but I just think there's something cool about actually taking a day of rest and not doing what you normally do. God honors that. This was me at a Palestinian gym. We just decided we're going to go down to this gym and work out with these guys. They're all Muslims, and they turned it into a bench press contest. <laughs> well, how much can you bench? Okay, so... Me and that guy there, we just started bench pressing stuff. The guy spot me as an ex-bodybuilder. But I got to share my testimony in there, and it was good. Great. You know what? If, Arabs are amazing people. You know, we see on the news that Arabs are terrorists, and they're going to cut your head off and string you up and burn you. But they're an amazing people group. Yes, there are, are radical Muslims, but they're not what they're portrayed to be. Um, 
and they're, they just come with open arms, and their, their culture is loving. And I don't know what it's going to be like in the, in, the late, in the latter days when the Muslims rise up and kill us all, but I know that they are, they are amazing people. This is more just them. They always want their picture taken. And this was the tree that um, Zacchaeus climbed up in. And this is in Jericho. It's the only tree of its type in the area, so they say that it's the tree that... Cool. This here, I got healed right here by putting my feet in that water. That is Elisha's well. And it's cool that I get to learn all these stories over again, so I go back because I want to know more about them. The, this well used to be salt water, and it used to be nasty, right? Was it salt? So Pastor? poison and there were lots of miscarriages in this area and the land was barren and Elisha threw salt in there because God told him to and now this area in Jericho there are twins all the time people get healed I had bad toenails I stood in that water and prayed that I would get healed and my toenails are healed amazing so I brought some home and I'm selling them for $5.99 a drop, <laughs> if you guys want. <laughs> this was in Jericho. Um, this is a very tough show uh, because it's tough doing shows amongst Muslims in some areas. This was one of those areas. And the funny thing is it was an American Muslim that had moved there that was really being rowdy. You gonna break the bricks or what? Come on! You know, they just wanna see us break stuff. But we got to just love on this, this guy here. He's in a wheelchair. Just went and bought him stuff and just prayed for him and just actually popped wheelies on that wheelchair with him and took him on a fast ride. And he liked it. It was fun. This was in the city of Jericho. That is the Dead Sea. Those are the Jordan Mountains. And we're at Masada. You may know about Masada, because I never knew anything about Masada. It's where the, uh, the, there's a, a city up on this plateau that King Herod the first, I guess, built. It's beautiful. I mean, it's just so beautiful here. This was a church in Taipei, which, what's, what did that area used to be? Anybody? Anyway, this is where G they say Jesus went. Before, right before he went to the um, Garden of Gethsemane and was captured. And people still do, you can see, they still do blood sacrifices. You know, they string them up here, they, they make the cross on there. This is in, in Taipei. It's in Palestine, but it's... This is that same church, just the ruins. I forget the name of it. This is in Fargo, North Dakota. This is the first tour... And this was a fun trip. We were there for a month, going to all the schools, going to churches. We went to this, I think it was a Baptist church. We did a show. It's first time anybody, they've been doing this for 17 years, has seen this. 100% of the church gave their heart to the Lord. So that was pretty amazing to have a whole church that, this was still in Taipei here. I got to pray with a guy that, his dad was a minister, his grandfather was a minister, but he says they don't know Jesus. He also had both his hands broken, both his legs broken by Israeli soldiers. I got to pray with him, lead him and his wife to the Lord. Amazing. This is the wall that they put up in between the West Bank and um, Jerusalem, or Israel. It's all Israel, but they call it the West Bank. This was a lady that wanted to kiss me. <laughs> this was in Scotland, and we started off the tour with some Scottish dancing, and we were dancing for hours, and part of the dance is you kiss the person on the cheek. So that was fun. <laughs> this is part of our team in Scotland in kilts. You guys have seen the, the Scottish videos. Some more Scotland stuff. This is a town where there was a revival here in the 1400s. In this, there's an island just off here, and there was a Holy Spirit revival there. 
This more Scotland. This church was built in eleven in the eleven hundreds. This is one of the and this church was actually founded on a murder. That's the funny part. They were killing each other back then. And there's the church right there, and there's the information. This guy, George Wishart, was, we were at the spot in the street where he was burned at the stake. And that was the actual murder that one of the churches started out of. The Church of Scotland, I believe. And that's where they martyred him. This piece of gum right there, too. <laughs> this was at a show in Scotland. This was in Dunfermline. I, we got to spend a couple days in their schools and share and preach the gospel. And then we, this was in an amazing theater. I mean, it was an old, old theater in, in uh, Scotland. And that's the pastor of the church that we were praying for. Great man of God. That's the taxi system in the Philippines. <laughs> I actually talked that guy into driving. I don't know if I'm driving that one, but he let me drive it around. It was pretty fun. It's just a motorcycle with some shell on it. We, we, would, we squeezed a six-foot-eight Samoan dude in there, too. <laughs> These are the guys that escorted us around in the Philippines. The area we were in was riddled with rebels, and so they made the Army and Police Department escort us. That's just another one of our shows at a, at a school up in, the, up in the mountains in the Philippines. Doing the human tug of war there. It's a cute little kid. Those are all decisions for Jesus. That's a good thing I love about serving our Lord. Is he doesn't just make us, but he gives us an opportunity to make a decision. And that's amazing to me. I wish it, well, it took me quite a while to make that decision to serve Jesus with all my heart. And, you know, I never, ever thought that I'd get to do this stuff. Hey, Dax. Um, but I'm so blessed, I'm so honored that I get to use all those things that the enemy tried to use for, for bad I get to use those for good. I get to share my testimony at just about every show. God's testimony that he used me in. Because it's such a, a story of pulling somebody out of the garbage, completely in the world, completely serving themselves, on the deathbed, and now I get to share life with people. I know it's late. It's like 12.15. Uh-oh. Is it 12.15? I don't care. But what I wanted to do today is we are the body, and I get to travel around the world and see signs and wonders, but I want to see signs and wonders here in Lake Quinault. And I know there are people in here with the gift of healing. You want to come out and play some, some soft worship music, Rusty? And I wouldn't feel right if I didn't offer that opportunity while I'm here back in the church that, that makes this all possible. You guys have some treasures stored up, let me tell you. Um, amazing. I was praying with Will and Mindy the other day, and she was telling me about the healing of Mike and Holly's baby. And I'm like, would you come up and, you know, would you be willing to come up on Sunday and, and pray with people? Because obviously, Mindy has the gift of healing, and I didn't give myself the gift. It's God's gift, it's His power, He's the healer. Um, it's the Holy Spirit is the one that heals. I don't know where you guys are at with healing, with healing with unforgiveness in your heart, with physical healing. But I want to pray, I want to pray with you guys. If there's anybody in here that has some physical needs, maybe you're sick, maybe there's things you're working on in your life, you're not fully surrendered, you're coming to church. And it's just a thing because your grandparents did it. I know that road because I did that for a long time. But if you want more, if there's somebody out there that wants more, if they want a touch of the Holy Spirit, I promise you the Holy Spirit's real.
there's no way I would be standing up here sharing with you guys if, if the Holy Spirit wasn't real and didn't supernaturally change my heart. If the Holy Spirit didn't draw near to me, so I would draw near to the Holy Spirit. So I want to, I just want to offer that to you guys today. Because God is alive. We serve a living God that wants to heal our iniquities, wants to heal our hearts, wants to heal the, the brokenness in our hearts, the walls that we put up in our hearts from the secret sin that we have in our life, the walls that keep us from, from fully surrendering to Christ.